XRP, XRP, XRP. The Bulls are getting ready to run out the gates, family. Can't you feel it? Hi, Vibe Assets. Welcome back to today's show. I got a good one for you today. You know every time that you click on this channel, the content is going to be bullish. Go ahead and give me a follow on my Twitter page at High Vibe Assets. Without further ado, let's go ahead and kick off today's show. I worked with Ripple actually dating back to 2014, so I know them pretty well, or um, not not as much in recent years. But while I was still at Morgan Stanley, actually, we took a pretty uh, deep dive with a corporate client on this very question of how do we actually help the corporate clients save money on their cross-border payments. And Ripple is absolutely trying to solve the problem that uh, a lot of folks are trying to solve and coming at it from many different directions. Um, they were the first enterprise company that I met at Morgan Stanley. And had they come in to talk about Bitcoin, they wouldn't have gotten a meeting. But because they had come in to talk about simply non-Bitcoin and applying the the uh, the non, non-Bitcoin blockchain to real world problems, they got the meeting and, and then it, it took off. So you're right, they, they absolutely have played a, an important part of defining the problem and showing that there are alternative solutions. Uh, LP, we can innovate both below it and above it. Um, but the main point that I want to make is that ILP is a micropayment technology. Over a billion ILP payments in 2018. Uh, and there's a reason that's important. You can do everything with a micropayment. Micropayments are kind of like packets. If you think about the way the internet works, it sends a packet to its destination with the best effort. ILP does the same thing. The smarts are at the endpoints, and the same thing is true with ILP. So if I want to send somebody $100, I can just sort of start streaming money at them, and when it gets to $100, I can stop. And that is better for a number of reasons. If you're going to make a payment in one shot, you need to get a quote. But do you get a free quote or do you pay for the quote? If you get a free quote, it's going to be a terrible quote because you've got a free option. If you're going to pay for the quote, how many quotes do you pay for? Do you just pay for one and then take it? Do you pay for five quotes and only take one of them? When you stream micropayments, when you make payments by micropayments, you can stream that payment through multiple, through multiple forwarders. And those individual forwarders can stream that payment through multiple forwarders, and you can take advantage of that best path. And if the path is really good, you can stream money faster. And if the path is really bad, you can stream money more slowly. And the net effect is, is that you can manage a payment as a series of micropayments. And I know that sounds kind of crazy to you guys today, but if we lived in the, the circuit switch days of telecom, packet switch, like sending a telephone call over packet switching would sound just as crazy, but it's just as innovative. Uh, if we can develop micropayments that are as cheap as a DNS request, we, we, micropayments can take over the world. We can, put all of, we can put all of the world's payments on a modern payment platform that interoperates between both blockchain and non-blockchain value. Uh, Interledger payments plus digital assets could be that internet of value, that way to move value all around the world. Thank you. Is the ability to settle payments via a digital asset, XRP. XRP's speed, scalability, and cost make it the ideal bridge asset for cross-border payments. This allows banks to grow their payments volume and reach without accumulating more direct liquidity relationships. With XRP's trading volume at higher daily average than most exotic currencies, it makes it an ideal bridge asset for payments into exotic corridors. With this liquidity arrangement, each bank either holds XRP directly or leverages an exchange to source XRP. This serves as an on-demand, fungible liquidity pool that can be used for payments. You know, family, I could go on and on and show clip after clip show after show, bid after bid to show exactly and to prove that XRP is at the center of this brand new digital asset space in this new quantum financial system. And Ripple, which is the Amazon of crypto, is leveraging the greatest digital asset ever created on the Interledger protocol, which have already been agreed by the big and competent players to make sure that this new industrial revolution that we're going into, the fourth industrial revolution, the Great Reset, the greatest transformation of wealth that humanity has ever seen to let us know family that XRP is sitting right in the middle of that. What a time it is family to be alive. Make sure that you're holding on to those bags. Make sure that you're adding on to those bags as well. This is not financial advice and I am not a financial advisor. Of course, these are just my perspectives.
We got the Global Blockchain Business Council mentioning XRP and Stellar Wallets as developments that could lead to mainstream proliferation of the digital assets. Let's go ahead and get into this article real quick, family. And what I'm showing you on this channel is it's no matter where you go, okay? XRP, Ripple, the XRP ledger, interledger protocol, the big banks, the big conglomerates, right? Trillions of dollars of assets on their books. Swift moving trillions of dollars a day. All of the big conglomerates, the big banks, MoneyGram, MasterCard, Western Union, Swift, Amazon Web Services, Accenture, BlackRock, Citibank. They've all said that they're using distributed ledger technology and blockchain in 2023. Okay. You got them also collaborating with Zoom to create non-custodial XRP wallets with keys encrypted and stored with Android and, A and iOS devices. Finally, 10 grand partnered with Stellar Lumens with Stellar Singer Card, a physical device designed to be used as an additional singer for your main Stellar accounts. These developments have taken us all closer to the mainstream proliferation of digital assets utilizing asymmetric cryptography. And these are basically big words for us to make sure that we're understanding that this is the transformation of wealth that we've been talking about and it's right in front of our faces. You know, remember last week when Gary Gensler was down in, in front of the 118th Congress getting absolute barbecue grilled? All of the senators, the 118th Congress, blasting him about cryptocurrency regulations, blasting him about stable coins regulations. We've been seeing different um, conglomerates around the world, different regulatory bodies, different governments have given the green light on crypto, the G20, the G7, China, Russia, right? The African nations are pushing forward with this brand new development in technology. XRP, right, is an agnostic exchange token that's going to be the mediary, essentially the bridge currency that's going to allow for the same way how that the Internet provided for us as to be a medium, essentially, of telecommunications by the way that we stream, the way that we broadcast different things on these networks on the back end. The same thing is what XRP and all of cryptocurrency essentially is doing to the Internet of value. We need this technology today, right? And when you think about correspondent banking, correspondent banking is not open every day, right? If you got bank holidays, the banks are closed Monday through Friday, closing at 3 p.m. You think about the traditional stock markets, the traditional bond markets, things of that nature, Monday through Friday. This is not a... 24-7, 365 industry, the way that telecommunications is. Just imagine, family, if you were living in a world and you were not able to send a tweet on the weekends or you were not able to send out a message on your instant messengers or your text messages. You were not able to place phone calls after three o'clock when all of the business are closed. See, we don't really imagine a world like that with telecommunications because we have the Internet of Information. All of the protocols have been agreed behind the scenes, the standard text message protocol, the standard Bluetooth protocol, the standard email protocol, the standard uh, radio messaging protocol. All of those protocols that are going on behind the scenes that us as frontline users to these applications, we don't even think about these things because these things are 100 percent instant. Now, when you think about it as the Internet of value, you think about it in the way when we're dealing with old correspondent banking and fractional banking, even though that the technology doesn't match up on both sides, we essentially don't say anything because that's essentially what we're used to. We are done with old correspondent banking. We're done with trap liquidity around the world. We're done with not actually having a level playing field when it comes to finances, when it comes to loans, when it comes to bank accounts, when it comes to getting access to capital to move your business forward, to move your foundation forward, to put your family in a better position with access of being able to invest in different protocols like we are doing with the XRP and the XRP ledger. I got a video right here, family with Naveen Gupta. He's explaining to us how XRP is going to help the whole world, is going to help entrepreneurs move to a 24-7 financial infrastructure that we will be able to build out as many use cases. We will be able to innovate and use this technology to bring in the fourth industrial revolution. Crypto is one of the 
the asset class that trades 24 7 right 365 days everywhere around the world right so what opportunity it essentially gives you that Bhavin's local currency is GBP and Mika-san's local currency is yen now there is a GBP to XRP trade that's happening 24 7 365 days a year there's a there's XRP to yen trade that's happening 24 7 365 days a year hence you are able to use the 24 7 infrastructure that already exists and be able to move value from two fiat correct a starting point and then end points right so you're using crypto as a bridge right and this 24 7 trading ability allows you to do that but whereas if you look at all the traditional systems they have been said monday to friday they only trade in local pairs they're closed on saturday and sunday and that's the reason it gives rise to settlement risk pre-settlement risk custody services escrow services so there is a huge plethora of intermediaries that exist primarily because markets are not 24 7. now markets are 24 7 and hence, you, one, you don't need all of them. And then a lot of business models where they're not possible earlier are possible now. And that's the true advantage of crypto. And as entrepreneurs build on the top of this 24-7 infrastructure, you will see more and more use cases causing that step A change in the user experience. And again, family, us being on the front end and using these apps on the front end, you know, we believe that the Internet of value essentially is already here because, again, we're able to use PayPal, we're able to use Venmo, you're able to use Cash App, and you're able even to use Apple Pay to even send money in certain text messages. But when you're talking about cross-border payments, family, I'm talking, man, this is a $185 trillion problem. There's so much friction, okay? There are so many fees. I'm going to give a personal testimony. I'm from the United States, of course, but I did a little time in working into Canada for two years, and I had to essentially work in Canada and live in the United United States. So essentially all of the fiat that I was earning was in the Canadian dollar. And to actually send that back over to the United States and to actually have the USD and the, and the CAD work together, man, I was getting hit on top of the head when you're talking about taxes, when you're talking about transferring over those fees. And my bank account was in essentially USD and those fees transferring those over to CAD and taking the CAD and transferring those funds over to USD. It was a nightmare, an absolute nightmare. I lost so much money, so much funds just by transferring over and these transfer fees. And essentially, a lot of people around the world live in different countries and send money back home to their native land. Right. And most of us, the United States is so big that we live in, in the same country, but we don't really experience cross border payments. But when you go across the seas, you go to South America, things of that nature, these countries are small. So it's easily to live in one country and work in another country and dealing with different fiat currency pairs. We need a real time global payment system that is actually needed to be working 24 seven, right? Every single second of the day of the week, not being able to close and being as liquid in every single currency pair that there is. People didn't believe me when I had told them that ISO 2022 and XRP and the XRP measure had correlations with each other. We're actually going to be merged together to help bring in this $185 trillion use case problem that needs to be solved today. ISO 2022 went live this month. Ripple just announced the liquidity hub is now open for business. Amazon Web Services is now parting with Ripple using the XRP ledger. And you're telling me XRP is not the greatest digital asset ever created? I mean, the footprint is everywhere. Every The things are the railroad tracks are already laid out. The train has already left the station. Take a look at your screen, family. I got another good one for you. We're going to be talking about right here the real-time global payment systems. To be able to send and receive global payments from your accounting software 24-7, 365 within seconds, okay? For so much, then less than a penny. Using International Financial ISO 2022 standard for a maximum compatibility, interoperability. This is what we've been talking about, family, and how it works. You showing you exactly how it works with dolly pay import send receive and export but this is one important thing that i'm telling you family that if you have an opportunity to go ahead and get your hands on some xrp this is not financial advice and i'm not a financial advisor but you need to go ahead and grab some family make sure that you smash that like button make sure that you hit that subscribe button as well iso 20022 and the xrp ledger are going to be merged in together again 
ISO 2022 is just a messaging payment system, okay? It's just a payment system to be able to communicate with one another. But the XRP ledger and the XRP token sitting on that ledger is going to be an agnostic exchange token. Everything is going to be pushed from ISO 2022 messaging system being pushed to inner ledger. And whatever inner ledger is using or whatever system is going to be used to push these payments through the inner ledger, whether if it's the X current, whether if it's R3 quarter, whatever system that you're using, right? For the real time growth settlement system, passing these payments through the XRP ledger. This is big family. This is big. This is all the money. This is the tokenization of all assets, man. You talking quadrillions. You talking about numbers that don't even fit in your calculator and you adding debt on top of that. You won't even be able to add that up, right? XRP and the accounting mechanism. Most software, most accounting softwares support foreign currencies like USD, Euro, and others. By adding XRP as a foreign currency, you can book directly in XRP and don't have to apply any foreign currency conversions in Dolly Pay anymore. And this is essentially, I know this for a fact by seeing those daily conversions every day, just by swapping from United States dollar to the Canadian dollars. Egregious. You talking about the way that we are able to use telecommunications with the Internet of Information. But then with the Internet of Value, we can't even feel nothing. This is garbage. You got the big mainstream players and the big conglomerate players, the big tech players. I told you they're going to be coming into this finance space because they understand that old correspondent banking is over with. And again, you don't just have to be a bank. You don't just have to be a quote unquote financial institution now in this brand new digital asset space because it is now a level playing field. Look, <laughs> if you got a real world use case and you're solving a real world problem and you have high demand and you have people using your product for a financial tool built on top of a blockchain that is an open source protocol, you're going to be able to use it. So for all of you coders out there, for all of you programmers out there that can think about different use cases and use these different protocols, the XRP ledger, the Ripple protocol, all of these other protocols that's going to be hit, right? You're going to be able to hit the jackpot. This has never been able to be done before. Look at this. We got last week Ripple dropped a mic on the nation's banking industry by starting to offer 4.15 annual high yield savings accounts. No minimums, no lockups, FDI insured. This is the reason why that this is the brand new digital asset space. This is the fourth industrial revolution. This is the greatest transformation of wealth. This is the great reset. Right in front of our faces. Just imagine that you right now with your Chase, with your Wells Fargo, with your Bank of America, with your credit union, blah, blah, blah. Right. What's your savings account annual uh, yield? Probably zero point zero 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 seven five. Absolutely garbage. We are done with old correspondent banking right in front of our faces. And XRP is sitting right in the middle of this new blockchain system. XRP could fit the bill for an international, non-national currency, a real reserve currency, a super national currency. We've talked about that on this show as well, that the IMF and the World Bank and the Bank of International Settlements and ISO 2022 and uh, in World Economic Forum and all of the big conglomerates, the Lenders of last resorts, the central bank of central banks, okay, could use as a settlement mechanism. The IMF singled out Ripple as a disruptor as well. Let's go ahead and take a look at this article. And again, family, I got slide after slide, article after article saying XRP. I know a lot of times that when we think Ripple and people are saying Ripple and using Ripple, they're not going to use XRP. You can use the API and not use XRP, we understand, but what is the point of plugging into Ripple's API and plugging into the Interledger protocol and not using the greatest digital asset, the agnostic exchange token, the bridge currency that's going to make these payments and settlements possible within a blink of an eye in seconds for less than a penny. The central bank idea is still built around an international non-national currency and XRP could fit the bill. It already does in most ways. The IMF acting together with the World Bank as a central bank for central banks 
could use XRP as a settlement means between banks of all the world while keeping balances along with bilateral relationships. This is a huge deal, family. You got Christine Lagarde coming out and speaking about XRP directly and ripple is already working alongside 40 or 50 of the world's central banks so it's already developed a collaborative a collaborative essentially network that will allow it to take center stage of the old key planes and be a main adoption tool for the international monetary fund and the bank and the world bank this is a central bank of central banks this is the lenders of last resorts this is what they're saying not me and you have to understand that XRP is sitting right in the middle. And this is what they're saying about this as well. The IMF's leader singled out Ripple in the past, calling it a disruptor, for instance, above other digital assets, which shows that she's very well about Ripple and technologies and its currency. So it will only make sense for the IMF to take advantage of Ripple's XRP already developed on the networks, its technology and reliability to bring forward the next world's financial system. <laughs> I mean, you can believe it or not, family, it's still true. You can believe that XRP is not going to be the world's bridge currency, the next world reserve digital currency, an agnostic exchange token, a supranational currency, whatever the hell designation or designation that they're going to give it. Okay, family, it does not matter. This has been print ever since 2013, ever since 2014. Interledger protocol is on the Internet of Values chart timeline for 2025. 90% of all international trades and international settlements will be on the ISO 20022 messaging system by 2025. By 2027, $250 trillion will be pumped through cross-border payments. Judge Annalisa Torres, go ahead and give us a ruling on the Ripple versus the SEC case so we can get on with the fourth industrial revolution. I'm confident that the judge will say that secondary market sales are not in play, that secondary market sales of XRP are not securities, that the token itself is not a security. And I say that just because of XRP holders amicus brief, Coinbase amicus brief, Blockchain Association, Digital Chamber of Commerce, and a slew of others. Uh, spin the bits, and everyone else, the tap jets, I remit all of that. There's so much attention on this case. I think she will feel morally obligated to have to address those issues, even though she technically doesn't. If she wanted to try to avoid them, I don't think she will. I think we have a great judge, and we will see. Thanks for everyone tuning in to today's show. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Go ahead and turn on those notifications. This is not financial advice, and I'm not a financial advisor, but please let everyone know that the high vibe said that the bulls are getting ready to run out the damn gates. Yeah.